rushing through the snow, and it was what's up and say, how far as we go, laughing all the way. <laughs> All right, it's that time of year, people. I'm wearing my holiday, oh, scandalous. <laughs> I'm wearing my Christmas vest, my ugly Christmas sweater vest, sweater vest, key, um, because it's that time of year and we're making holiday cards. John and I just took the baby out to Target and we bought some wrapping paper and some Christmas goodies. We're just in the holiday spirit and whether you're a before Thanksgiving listen to Christmas music person or you're an after Thanksgiving listen to Christmas music person, it's hard to say, this video is for you because you gotta write your Christmas cards. People appreciate the words of affirmation and the love and the writing of the things like happy holidays and you are so good to me, thanks. So we are going to be painting a holiday wreath that you can use as a Christmas card to give to somebody or a handmade gift. Those types of things. So let's do this. So let's get started. In this video, I for this tutorial, I'm basically only going to be using my size 6. Basically, I am only going to be using my size 6 Princeton brush. Y'all know I love this brush. It's linked in the description below, Princeton. Um, I'm also going to use an X-Acto knife. For any of you who are wanting to make this into an actual card, an X-Acto knife is handy, but you don't need it. You can just fold the piece of paper in half. But if you want a real nice crispy fold that's like clean, then in the X-Acto knife makes it easier for you to score it because you will be scoring it and it'll be, make it easier to fold. Do be careful because these things are sharp and I have a very long scar on my left point, pointer finger from high school art class. Um, there's a long scar from an X-Acto knife, so just you be careful. And I have a pencil, just an HB, actually this is a 7B because it's the only pencil I have close by that's sharpened. Um, but any light-ish soft lead pencil, B means soft. I don't know why. I don't know who decided that. I don't really know what it means. Why, why does B mean soft? Um, and I have an eraser. So I am going to measure out where the halfway point on my piece of paper is going to be. I'm painting on a seven by 10 Stonehenge Aqua cold press block of paper. Um, seven by 10 is my greeting card, handmade greeting card uh, size of choice because when you fold it in half, um, hot dog <laughs> weighs so horizontally you cut the 10 in half and you get five. So five by seven is a really standard A7 um, size for greeting cards. There's tons of envelopes that you can buy in stores, even like a Staples or a Target will have a generic A7 envelope for you um, to buy if you're just buying one onesie twosie envelopes here and there. Um, so I'm painting on a seven by 10 because I can fold it into a five by seven. Like I said, very generic standard stationary size for envelopes. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna mark off in the middle of my paper where the five inch mark is on the top and bottom because I'm painting horizontally and then I'm gonna fold it there. So I'm going to grab my ruler and find the middle of the paper mark and on the bottom a little mark because then I'm gonna take this sheet of paper out of the block and I'm gonna score it with my X-Acto knife. All I'm gonna do is at the five inch mark on top and bottom, I am going to hold my ruler down on the paper and I'm just going to run my X-Acto knife up and down a couple of times to score the spine of the card so it folds really nicely. So I'm not really putting too much pressure on the paper. I'm probably gonna do it three times. That should be good. So now I've got a nice indent from the knife, the X-Acto knife, 
where I scored the card and it folds real nice and clean. We don't have to do that crazy pressing, rubbing of the ruler back and forth. Just gotta press it down. I probably could have gone a couple more times, but nice clean fold. All right, so now that I have my fold, um, I know where I'm painting and I'm going to be painting a wreath. So I'm gonna grab something circular that is smaller than the size of my card fold the front of my card that's a bit tiny. Let's do, that's too big, that's what she said. All right, so I am going to, for this card, I know that I'm gonna do a wreath and I might do some lettering underneath it, so I'm gonna have the wreath a little bit higher. If you wanna learn how to do some lettering, we have some videos for you. We will link them below and all of that jazz if you want to learn how to letter like Happy Holidays or Merry Christmas, etc. Check out those videos. All right, so now I'm gonna take my pencil again, and I've got this, it's just a candle. It's round, it's circular. And so I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to lightly, lightly outline the circle. And you wanna make sure that it's light because watercolor is transparent. And so some, if you paint really um, thick, like if you grab a lot of paint on your brush, you can mostly cover the pencil marking, but if you're painting with a lot of water, so you're painting more light colors, then the pencil is going to show through. So if that bothers you, just make sure you're gonna paint really, really light. So now I'm ready to paint, and like I said, I'm only using my size six brush, and even this is kind of big for this, I'll make it work, but you could use a size two or a size four if you have it. Um, I have a size six on hand and I'm gonna use it. My size two would work, but I'm, I'm feeling the six. It's my favorite brush. So if you haven't seen my wreath tutorial um, in another video, we'll link it below for you so you know exactly how I approach compositionally, how I approach these wreaths. Um, but I'm gonna start with my bigger branches first. So I am going to mix up, instead of doing like small berries, those are more filler. So I do those usually after I fill in the majority of the wreath with the bigger um, branches of like pine or whatever. So we're gonna do sap green is a great mid green. And when I'm painting holiday, holiday green to me just feels a little bit darker and richer than just your standard Monstera leaf green or rose leaf green or whatever. So I want to darken it with a little bit of blue to make it richer. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of Mars black. The blue I used is Prussian blue because it's the dark blue. I wouldn't use a cobalt blue because that would just kind of make it more opaque and not richer. So I'm grabbing some Prussian blue, a little bit of Mars black, and adding it to my sap green, which is running very low in my palette. And we are going to paint basically just some gestural strokes using my size six brush, I'm just going to have it at a 45-ish degree angle and I'm going to lay down little dashes. All I'm doing is just placing the brush at this 45 degree angle on my piece of paper. I'm not pulling it or flicking it or doing anything else. All I'm doing is just placing it and it's gonna make this little, like these branches, little spear of leaf. And then we're gonna put a branch in the middle of it. And as I create this branch, I'm going around and lightening my green and my water. And I might even grab a little bit of ye lemon yellow deep to, to make some leaves more yellow than others. But this pencil line here, I know is going to be brown. That's gonna be my branch. So I'm just kind of placing these leaves around it. Thank you. 
making sure to vary the shade, the lightness, and slightly vary the hue by adding yellow. So right in here, there's a lot of the same value, which is lightness and darkness. So I'm going to lighten the color I have on my brush with my water, and then I'm just going to place some really light branches here and there. So pretty simple, just following this circle and pressing my brush down as I go around the wreath. Place the brown and then the berries. Okay, so now I am ready to start adding in my branches and my berries. And while some of these leaves are still wet, I wanna kind of move quickly because I like when these colors bleed together. Um, the reds and the greens and then some of the brown to the green. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of Opera Rose with a lot of Scarlet Lake for my red berries. So they're not just your traditional red, they're um, a little bit of pink in them. And same thing, I'm lightening some of the berries so they're not all the same value. Some are a little bit more pink than others. Some might have a little bit of Prussian blue and I'm just taking the side of my brush at about 35 degrees and I'm kind of doing that motion you do when you're brushing your teeth.
as you're painting these leaves and berries, always make sure you're taking a little step back and looking where the high and low points are. So right now I have kind of a star like this, which is good. You don't want anything that's square shaped. You want people's eyes to kind of bounce in a zigzag shape across the paper compositionally because that will just continue to lead their eyes down the paper instead of landing in spots and having to pair up two things um, and looking for the next pair because that'll leave them wanting more. So you want to have odd numbers and things that continue in a zigzag or S shape. And then next I'm going to grab some burnt umber and I'm going to darken it with Mars Black for my branches. We're just gonna show peaks of these branches using a vertical hold with my brush so my brush is pretty much straight up and down. And with little to no pressure on the paper, I'm just going to flow through here and follow that pencil line that's peeking through and maybe even extending to some of these leaves. All right, so now we're done. We've got our basic wreath, holiday wreath, all painted and pretty. Pretty straightforward, but really, really fun to do. And I'm sure your loved ones are just going to die when they, <laughs> when they see the effort that you've put in for their handmade card. People love that stuff. So if you wanna learn how to calligraph happy holidays or Merry Christmas on this bad boy, Make sure you check out the video, we'll link it below, um, how to add lettering to your card, and then you can really make it personal and you can say like, Merry Christmas, Mom, I love you so much, I'm sorry for my terrible teenage years, maybe that's just me, and maybe I should just send that to my mom. Anyway, check out those videos, and check out if you, <laughs> if you wanna um, paint a snowflake, we also got that too, so see you in the next video. Finger guns? Um, we won't have that for the fall until the following week. So, if you want to paint a snowflake, we are going to, I'm going to do that right now, but it's not going to be posted until the following week, my husband says. So, check that out when it's posted. <laughs> and just for funsies, because I'm incredibly curious. Please comment below with your favorite holiday traditions and I'm a huge fan of Nat King Cole, Bing Crosby, Charlie Brown Christmas, that kind of like old jazzy holiday music, but I want to hear what your favorite holiday tunes are. I might need to switch it up, I don't know, I'm kind of in a weird way traditional about my Christmas stuff, but let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear what makes your holiday time special. See you in the next video.